Those people, those conquerors, those leaders, they would enter into the town, the city. Just imagine, just picture how they would enter in. At the head of the army, riding a big white horse, trumpets blaring, people dancing and singing, rose petals being thrown. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Lungu. And we are Fanny and Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction. But before we get into the reaction, guys, we wanna thank everybody who have been subscribing to our channel with the video SMP. And also we wanna thank the people who've been giving us reaction videos with the realist. If you have any kind of reaction video, just let us know. You we are not limited to anything, we do any kind of reaction videos, just let us know in the comment section and we're gonna do it for you. So right about now, a lot of people suggest that we should go react to humility of the prophet. Peace be upon him by Abdul Nasir Jan Janda or something like that. So without any further ado guys, let's get Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahbi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, this is Abdul Nasser for Quran Weekly. Wanted to talk to everyone today inshallah about a really important concept and that's the concept of arrogance and also the opposite of arrogance which is what we call humility, humbleness. And the perfect example, the, the, the ultimate example of humility and humbleness is of course the Prophet ﷺ. There's a reason why Allah's made him the standard of everything good that's in the, uh, everything good, every quality. Allah has declared him within the Quran to be the standard of that. لَقَدْ كَانْ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So the Prophet ﷺ embodied humility. He lived the ultimate humble life. And the best example of the Prophet ﷺ's humility, so he's of course the best example of humility and the ultimate display of humility within his life was at the occasion of Fatih Makkah, the conquest of Makkah. It was the most glorious day of his life. You have to understand the historical context and of course in these videos we want to reach a very wide audience, we want to reach out to everyone and we don't uh, assume that anyone's coming with a specific uh, a certain type, a certain amount of knowledge. There's no prerequisites to watching these videos. So to briefly explain to you the layout of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. For the first 20 years of his life, the people of Mecca, the people of Quraysh, they had persecuted him, they had uh, tortured him, they had slandered him, called him a liar, called him a poet, um, accused him of all, type of all types of horrible things. They even tried to assassinate him, not once, but multiple times. They kicked him out of his own city, out of his own hometown. And anyone who would dare to follow him, who would be willing to believe in him, they would persecute them, they would torture them mercilessly. So basically they had made his life difficult for 20 years. They had killed his family members, tortured his followers. They had done so much to him. After 20 years, the Prophet ﷺ was now entering the city of Mecca as the conqueror of Mecca, the, the, the victor. Today, the victory was his. Today, he had the upper hand. This was the most glorious day in the life of the Prophet ﷺ to achieve victory over the people that had tortured and persecuted him for 20 years. Now, if you look throughout the annals of human history, what you'll find is that any leader, any conqueror, any king, any general, anyone who had ever been in such a position before, was finally achieving victory over his opposition that had opposed him for years on years, decade after decade. You would find that those people, those conquerors, those leaders, they would enter into the town, the city. Just imagine, just picture how they would enter in. At the head of the army, riding a big white horse, trumpets blaring, people dancing and singing, rose petals being thrown. That's how they would enter into the city. But now we come to see the Prophet So he's achieving such an amazing victory. And how is he entering into the city? At the back of the army. There's no trumpets, there's no music, there's no singing, there's no rose petals. It's quiet, the mood is somber, Everyone is engaged in praising and glorifying Allah quietly, praying for the guidance of these people that they are conquering. And the Prophet ﷺ is all the way at the back of the army with his head bowed down so low that the narration actually mentions. The hadith actually says that it was the Prophet's head 
was almost bouncing off the back of the animal that he was riding. His head was practically bouncing off the back of the animal. His head was bowed down so low. He didn't have his chest held out high. His head up high. Look at me everyone. No, his head was down low. And he's praising and he's glorifying Allah and attributing this entire victory to Allah. Thanking Allah. Praying for the guidance of these people. This is how he entered into the city of Mecca. When he lined up in front of the people, when he gathered the people of Mecca together, and they were all crying and begging, pleading with him, be merciful to us, be kind to us. You're generous, you're kind. Don't, 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 don't do what we did. Don't, don't look at what we had done. You're better than us. At that time, the Prophet ﷺ said, I'll say to you what Yusuf said to his brothers, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم. I have no beef, I have no grudge with you today. I have no score to settle with you today. يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِيمُ Go seek your forgiveness with Allah. He's the most merciful of all those capable of showing mercy. I have nothing to so score to settle with you today. And then it's narrated that later on, when the Prophet ﷺ was standing in the Kaaba, with all the people of Mecca gathered there, and they were cleansing the Kaaba and purifying the Kaaba, and about to say, declare the name of Allah at the Kaaba, the Prophet ﷺ said some beautiful words. لا إله إلا الله وحده There's no one worthy of worship but Allah alone. صدق وعده He fulfilled his promise. ونصر عبده And he helped his slave. He helped his slave. He didn't say messenger, he didn't say prophet, he said slave. The Prophet ﷺ found it dignified, found it an honor to be the slave of Allah and to call himself the slave of Allah. Not just at any occasion, but at the most glorious moment of his life, he turns around and doesn't say, I'm the messenger of Allah, I'm the leader here, I'm the conqueror. No, he says, he calls himself the slave of Allah. And then he goes on to say what? وَهَزَمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدَ وَعَزَّ جُنْدَهُ He strengthened his army. وَهَزَمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدَ And who defeated all these people? I didn't. We didn't. Allah alone did. Allah granted this victory. I have nothing to do with this. That's humility. You have the upper hand. You have every... You've been tortured by these people, persecuted by these people. This is your moment to just let it out of your system. To relieve yourself emotionally, psychologically for once, be able to just, just say, yes, today I win. But even at that occasion, look how humble he is. Look at the humility of the Prophet he forgives the people, lowers his head, thanks Allah, praises Allah, calls himself the slave of Allah. This is the ultimate display of humility. We all have moments in our life where, you know, we, we feel like we're on top of the world. You get an amazing job, you get a raise, you got the best grades, you were, you were able to win out over a friend or some competition. You know, you had somebody you were arguing, debating with, you had a confrontation with, you feel like you won the confrontation. We all go through those small, small moments in our life. But we feel the need to gloat, to boast, to be arrogant. We should remember the example of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the last thing I wanted to add. This video was pretty much just about, the message here today was about arrogance, was about humility. But I wanted to add something here. What was the effect? You know, if you win, if you beat someone at something, if you end up coming out on top, you have the last laugh, as they say. And you can gloat and you can boast and you can you know, uh, slam your chest and you can dance around and parade around. Sure, absolutely, you can do that. But what ends up happening to that person that you just defeated? They, he hates you even more now. He's waiting for the next opportunity he can get back at you. Because you rubbed it in. But the Prophet ﷺ, what did he do? He defeated these people after 20 years. But when he behaved with humility, what was the reaction? What was the effect on those people? Fatima Makkah, there's another beautiful... There's so many amazing things about the incident of Fatima Makkah. I encourage all the viewers and the listeners to go and read the life of the Prophet ﷺ. But there's so many beautiful things. But one of the more amazing things about Fatima Makkah was so many key members of the opposition to the Prophet ﷺ. So many key individuals who were at the forefront of hating the Prophet and hating Islam. They ended up accepting Islam at this moment. I'll give you a few names. Hind. She was the wife of Abu Sufyan. She was the woman who had hired Wahshi, an African slave, 
She had promised him his freedom and promised him a lot of money to assassinate the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ during the Battle of Uhud. And once he told her that he had taken him out, he had killed him, she went down into the battlefield, mutilated his body. She muted a woman, took a knife to a dead body, the body of a dead person, and cut off the nose and the ears and cut the chest open and pulled out the internal organs. A woman did this. She hated the Prophet so much. And this is the venom, this is, this is how poisonous she was, how much she hated him. That woman, as much as she hated him, when the Prophet was so forgiving, so humble, she ended up coming to the Prophet and she, she actually covered herself up. She said she, she said she was afraid. If somebody recognized her, they would kill her or something. She comes to the Prophet ﷺ, reveals her face, says, I'm Hind. The daughter of Utbah, the wife of Abu Sufyan. And she says that, I've come to accept Islam. And she says, she says in the narration, that yesterday there was no one on, no one on this earth that I hated more than you. And today there's no one that I love more than you. That was what happened. He turned hearts, changed people, completely turned their hearts through his love, through his compassion, through his humility, his humanity. Ikrama, the son of Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl was the fiercest enemy of the Prophet ﷺ. Hated the Prophet ﷺ with a passion. His son, who had fought by his side, his father's side, in the battlefield multiple times against the Muslims. What did he do? He had, he had actually ran away from Mecca. His wife comes to the Prophet ﷺ and says, My husband ran away. He was afraid you would come, you would kill him. The Prophet ﷺ said, No, I have no beef with Ikrama today. He's called back. He does, she says, Will you give him safe passage? He said, Yes. Ikrama is safe. Nobody, he makes an announcement. Nobody's to harm Ikrama. Let him come peacefully. He arrives back in Mecca, comes to the Prophet ﷺ, and when the Prophet ﷺ gets the news that Ikram is about to arrive, he turns to the Sahaba and says, I realize Abu Jahl was one of our worst enemies, and a lot of the Muslims would sometimes, you know, just, you know, they would say bad things about Abu Jahl, but the Prophet ﷺ said that, look, Ikram is coming, that is his father at the end of the day, it will hurt his feelings, nobody say anything bad about Abu Jahl. Don't say anything bad about Abu Jahl. It will hurt Ikrama's feeling. He's coming to us peacefully. Let him come. When he comes, when he arrives, due to the kindness, this humility, this humanity, he accepts Islam, becomes a Muslim. Becomes a Muslim. And you know where he ended up dying at the end of his life? He ended up dying in the battlefield defending Islam as a Muslim. The same man, the son of Abu Jahl. And the stories go on and on and on and on. So many individuals, they were changed, they were affected by this love, this compassion, this kindness, this humility, this humanity. And as a last note, one thing, just as, just as a very, uh, just, just making a very open point, just, just addressing something very honestly. A lot of times, the arrogance that we display, I won't talk about other people, we should assess ourselves. Let's not worry about other people, let's worry about ourselves. The arrogance a lot of times that we display is just a masking of some insecurity that we feel, some unassuredness that we have on our part. So let's not, you know, that's an issue, that's a problem. But the way to solve that problem is not by being arrogant, by being conceited, by putting other people down, by acting as if we're better than other people and making other people feel lesser about themselves. We don't solve anything, we just compound our problem further. What we can do in those situations is find a connection with Allah. Build a relationship with Allah. And realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares for you. And He's blessed you so much. You have no reason to feel lesser about yourself. Be confident, be strong, and then go out there and be kind and be humble and be better people, be better human beings. As the example set for us by our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. What do you think? Um, I really like such messages because you know, our guns is one thing that's ruining the world. It's blinding the world, or not the world, it's blinding human beings. Mm -hmm. 
the minute was so consumed by arrogance, was um, limiting ourselves from learning new things, while limiting ourselves from maybe checking ourselves. That's why I like the point he made at the end, saying um, we should first assess ourselves. We're so blind to what's going on within ourselves that our arrogance leads us to assess other people's lives. Or look at what that person did. What about what you're doing? How about that? Humility goes a long way. It really does. There's so many things. Humility, with humility comes humbleness. When you're humble, you give chance to the world. You're more open-minded than an arrogant person. That's true. When you're humble, you're not pompous. When you're humble, you're not trained off yourself. When you're humble, you just, you're comfortable. Be it rich, be it poor, be it, even when you're sad, just you, your energy is still, what can I say? Just you come and collect it. Now when there's arrogance involved, you want everyone to know that something is wrong in your life. You just want attention. Yeah, oh yes, that's the way around it. You you're more like an attention seeker. You want everyone to notice you, whether for doing good, whether for doing bad. There's just so many things to say about this. What do you think though? Um first of all to start with uh Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, he was a good definition of humility, he gave. And uh, humility is one of the, of, the, of the virtues that people should embrace. It's something that is so simple, but again, when you have it, you will be able to see life in a different perspective, you get it. And I like the fact that, uh, I mean, it really, really uh, amazes me to see somebody who has it all, and then, and then he has humility. He's so humble. I mean, that's so. It's so amazing because in this world we live in today, it's really hard to find such kind of people. You get it, people. Uh, when people start becoming rich and then they start finding them, they start becoming arrogant, start commanding people to do things. Just because you have it all, you don't have to do all those kind of things. Sometimes, even if uh, one of your workmates just throws something down or maybe just does something wrong, you can be able to, you know, sit down and help, help or maybe just put it in the right position or something like that. That's what we call humility. And also, um, it's, it's um, I mean, okay, going to the part where he was talking about arrogance. Arrogance is just one of the things that uh, creates a lot of uh, negative energy or creates uh, bad energy. So it's something that when you have it, one, one, one way or the other you're gonna pass it probably to another person or you're gonna uh, let it go into your head to an extent of affecting the other partner or the other friend or the other whatever person that you have next to you so for you to uh, try and overlook that you have to find peace within you and I want to talk about something about peace like peace begins with you when you have peace, you'll be in a position to go out there and spread the peace. Just like I like saying that uh, before you go out there and start loving somebody or loving people and whatnot, make sure you have the, the utmost love within you until it reaches a point that it's pouring out. Or maybe it reaches the brim where it just starts to, you know, pouring out. That's when you should go out and love other people or the person that you feel like needs the love that you have. Same applies to peace. Peace is the same thing. Find peace within you. And the most important thing the guy said is, uh, that's the time. When you become arrogant, you should find peace within you. 
and also that's the the time whereby you should find Allah you should try and you know connect with God and that's the point where it's really crucial and I think with that you'll be able to to conquer arrogance and be able to display what we call humility humbleness and all those uh, good virtues that are out there I mean it's really nice to see a humble person who has made it in life and is so humble it's really makes me feel really good like this is this guy is so rich but at the same time it's really humble wow you get it but and then on the other side you'll find somebody who doesn't have anything but again you are so arrogant why are you arrogant about just the smallest things is that you about life? yeah probably maybe it's because they're bit about life probably because they see life as Things uh, are not going wrong, so. yeah so you start becoming you put down your humbleness you put down your humility and you start becoming arrogant towards people and whatnot which is not the way to go to go in such an amazing message such an amazing uh props goes to abdul nasir yeah and also props goes to the people who gave us this reaction to do you the biggest mvp if you have more kind of reaction like this just let us know in the comment section below we're gonna do it for you and the, uh, if you feel like we reacted to this video in a better way, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down in the comment section and tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction. What do you feel about this topic right here? Humility of the Prophet. Please be upon him. Uh, Nasi. Just let us know in the comment section below. We're going to be really happy to see your comments. Just indulge with us. Comment. We'll reply back. And we'll be able to read your comments too. And the most important thing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for subscribing. The more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you better better content and last but not the least we're gonna see you in the next video and peace out